Hey everybody, this is Hadrian. Thanks for watching. Let's play some Total War Attila and get started with our Eternal Empire series. We're going to go to Grand Campaign here and talk a little bit about the setup of our series. So as I mentioned, we're going to play on hard. Just a quick comment on that. Uh, the reason we're not playing on a harder difficulty level as much as I might like to for the extra challenge and for Let's Play purposes, um, the way that difficulty works in Total War is not that the AI gets smarter at higher difficulty levels. It simply cheats, and by cheats I mean they give penalties to the human, uh, to the human player, and then they get bonuses as the AI. So it just gives it more resources so that it's tougher to defeat, which I'm not saying that it shouldn't be played. There are some very good Total War Let's Players actually doing legendary campaigns right now that are awesome to watch, but it, uh, uh, it's just not very fun. And even the, some of those very Total War players have talked about how you know, the cheating on higher difficulty levels is a little bit silly. So we're going to go with hard because there's a little bit of a bonus to the AI and a little bit of a penalty to the player. Um, not enough to ruin our fun, but it definitely makes it uh, more entertaining. We're going to play as the Eastern Roman Empire as opposed to the Western. This is our brother, Flavius Honorius Augustus. We're going to play as Flavius Arcadius Augustus, who, that's a, you know, let's be honest, that's a slightly cooler name. I'm not going to read through all this, but I want to point out really quickly that we do have a couple of interesting traits. Our cultural trait is that we have the ability, just like the Western Roman Empire does, uh, to levy units from friendly hordes passing through Roman territory. And then we have the economic powerhouse trait, which gives us additional income and then additional trade tariffs as well. So when we're trading, we'll get more income from that. Uh, and then we'll also get more income just because we're the Eastern Roman Empire. So it's a nice little extra boost as a result of playing as the rich side of the empire. It's going to start in the year 395 AD. Just to go over the victory conditions really quickly, uh, we will not actually be able to achieve divine triumph because one of the things we are going to avoid doing, and I'll explain this more as the campaign uh, goes through, is we're not going to disable our legacy technologies. We're going to make a conscious decision as Arcadius to maintain the old ways and build them back up. So we will never actually get access to build the Imperial Palace. There are mods that would enable me to do that, but I decided not to do that, and I'll talk more about that in the series because I don't want to go on for too long at the beginning of gameplay. So that's what's going on there, and but I guess I can point out that the other victory objectives are just based on surviving until a certain date because, again, it's all about survival, and then looking at the... Um, Settlements that you control, how much money you have, how much technology you've researched, stuff like that. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and kick off this campaign. The air was filled with smoke and blood. The Roman Empire was divided from the shores of the Danube to the sands of Egypt and Arabia, the Eastern Empire sprawled. The West ripped itself to pieces, abandoning Rome, while the righteous looked east. The sun rose on Constantinople. God's new city where the spirit of Rome prospered. Her people grew rich and powerful, paying neighboring kings to do their will. was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. Romans of the Eastern Empire, those architects of a new age and forgers of a new empire to light the world, they made ready for war.
The late Emperor Theodosius decreed that Rome be divided, entrusting you with the bountiful East. Now the Empire is in danger. The Hunnic hordes are approaching from the Northeast, driving even the hardiest of barbarian tribes to flee before them. The Visigoths and their ilk migrate across your lands. They cannot be allowed to harm your people. Be mindful, too, of your southeastern territories. The Sassanid Empire is strong and will challenge you for dominion of the East. The West is guarded by the Western Romans, but they, too, are overstretched and under threat of barbarian invasion. It may be prudent to unite Rome under your banner and restore the Empire to her former glory. Funny you should suggest that. <laughs> Alright, so we've just gotten our first mission. Just to survive until spring 400. Notice one key difference right off the bat, uh, for those of you who are familiar with Rome 2 but maybe haven't played Attila. This is four turns per year, one turn per season. So it's not like Rome 2 where it would advance one year and one season per turn in that weird wonky way. This is just straightforward, one turn is one season. So we have uh, about 20 turns to survive and we're going to get 2,000, a whole 2,000 gold for it. I'm so excited. So this is very, very different as a start from anything I've done in Total War before. And this is why. I have a lot of territory, which means I have a lot to talk about. So before I do anything else, for those of you who might not have watched the introduction, let me just give you a quick narrative primer on what is going to happen and the kind of history that we're going to try to unfurl under our feet in this series. Upon witnessing the cleaving of the Roman Empire enacted by his father, Theodosius, the young Emperor Arcadius has had a vision from the old messenger god, Mercury. To a horde of demonic riders led by a horseman of the underworld itself, the Western Empire will fall, and after it, the East will follow. The fall of Rome in the West and its de facto capital, Mediolanum, is inevitable. The fate of Constantinople, however, rests in Arcadius' hands. If the Roman military machine can be reinvigorated in the East, and if the old gods are restored to the hearts of the people, with the godless mercy and corruption of Christianity purged from the land, the Dark Horseman can be defeated, Rome can be retaken, and the fire of the empire can be reborn. So that's more or less what we're going for. Right now, as you can see, Western Rome is standing, but uh, it's not going to be for long. Um, some very interesting things can happen early on in this series. And another thing that I want to say up front is that for several episodes, this is going to be painful to watch. It's going to be hard to watch. There are not going to be a good number of losing, or I'm sorry, a good number of winning battles. There's going to be a great deal of losing battles. And you just, you need to know that going into this. Um, this is definitely a comeback type of campaign, especially if you're playing as the Western Empire. But even if you're playing as the Eastern as we are, the game can really throw a lot at you early on that is really hard to fight back against until you build up some strength and can push back. So just know that. This is going to be a challenging um, campaign for me to play, and it's going to be challenging in some ways to watch. Um, so it's a little bit uh, a little bit sadistic from a watching point of view because um, you, you, you're going into this knowing that you're going to watch me get my butt kicked for several episodes. It's just the way it is. So anyway, let's take a look around. First of our territory... We have, this is actually going to be the most war-torn area in the coming turns. Constantinople, our capital, is right here. And we have a whole bunch of territory down here as well. Alexandria we still control, Antioch we still control. And this is probably one of the best areas to establish kind of a peaceful core where we can build up our cities a little bit more, spend most of our money uh, to kind of have an economic powerhouse starting up. So... You'll see me trying to do that, like kind of limiting the money I'm spending to this peninsula so that there are a core number of territories that while it doesn't, while the upgrades are not spread across the empire, this is more defensible, or at least that's the idea. Speaking of defense, let's go through our armies really quick. We have, looks like a pretty good, um, words come to me. Uh, what is this? Garrison. Thank you. In Constantinople. <laughs> we also have a somewhat meager garrison in Alexandria, which we're going to leave there out of hopes that we can keep Alexandria. 
I'm going to go ahead and move this army in Aelia Capitolina up to Emesa. And we're going to keep moving them all the way north because we need as many armies outside of Constantinople as possible. So there's that. And then we have this army in Melitine that we're going to move back as well. So we're going to give these orders right now to kind of bring some armies towards Constantinople and start getting ready for a fight there. Trust me, that's a good first thing to be thinking about. And then we have this little army in Viminatium. I'm going to combine these units to save on upkeep. Just a little bit of uh, extra money that way. And then, let's see, how do we best go about this? No, no. That's what I wanted to do. Thank you. All right, I'm going to have these guys go over here in the hopes that the Visigoths, these two armies right here, will not kill them, and I can bring them down here and fully upgrade that army. So that's our military situation. Now let's take a look at our political situation. First of all, we have our brother. This is us, the um, Emperor Arcadius. Our brother Flavius Rufinus, much older than us, so maybe an adopted son of um, Theodosius. This is not the ruler of the Western Roman Empire. This is just an older um, member of the faction. And he also happens to be our heir right now in case Flavius were to die. Flavius Rufinus, uh, or in case Arcadius were to die, Rufinus would uh, take control. So we're going to give him one of the military count slots. And we're also going to go ahead and dole out the rest of these promotions so that they can go through at the beginning of the next turn. Having these ranks filled out will really help our income going forward. So that's one of our next moves. And we also need some governors. So I'm going to install the emperor as governor of Thracia. I'm going to install Flavius as governor of Insulae Orientalis. Or am I? There we go. All right. So he's there at Insulae Orientalis. And then let's take a quick look at what our most... We need our governors in our best provinces. So, oh, actually, Insula Orientalis is not the best one. So maybe I need to uh, move him in the next turn. Or, no. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, we're going to kick him so that so that we can put a governor in, um, in Egyptus instead. I kind of like the idea of our heir being in Egypt. I'm used to Insula being one of the top four picks. So that was just kind of a, um, kind of a reflex there that went wrong. But that's fine. Uh, let's have a look now at the rest of our governors. Macedonia is another one of our areas that needs to be governed. And then finally, there's Cappadocia. Hey, a merchant. Very good. 10% from commercial, commercial buildings. <laughs> that hard C in Cappadocia is making me mispronounce things. All right. So that's that. Next order of business, let's take a look at our diplomatic screen. We are currently at war with the Visigoths, the Alans, the Tanukids. Uh, let's see if we can go ahead and make peace with these guys. They're usually pretty willing to make peace right away. There we go. Um, and then the we have puppet states. Of course, we're at war with the Huns. I didn't even mention them because they're the Huns. They're there. Um, we have, as puppet states, Nobatia and Lazica. Lazica, rather. Um, then we are trading with the Gassanids. The Novatians, the Lazicans, obviously, because they're uh, puppet states. The Armenians, and of course, Western Rome. Which, again, is nice and big and pretty right now, but it will fall apart insanely in the coming turns. So the next thing we need to do while we're on the diplomatic screen is we're going to say hello to the Sassanid Empire. And we're going to give them a nice big gift. 4,000 gold to the Sassanid Empire. Just because... We need to start sucking up to them as much as possible. Um, just, yeah. <laughs> uh, with the Sassanids being over here, we need as much as we can to prevent wars from developing on this front. Because we're going to have our hands full up here and probably even down here as well. So just trying to keep them at bay is going to be a big priority. Research-wise, we're going to go ahead and research uh, the Auxilia Barracks or the Functional Specialization Technology, which will give us access to the Auxilia Barracks, which will help us continue to move towards a uh, military um, military rebirth, a military renaissance, if you will, of the Roman Empire. Now let's have a look around. 
Because Arcadius has had these visions, we need him to go ahead and knock down all of these churches. This is going to cause public order problems. It will. All these churches, I mean, you can see they're, they're spreading religious influence, so a religious majority in a given area um, definitely helps with public order. Uh, it, that makes the population less conflicted, but also these buildings are giving between three and five public order to their provinces each. So we're definitely going to harm public order by bringing these down, but it will help start uh, Latin paganism, Greco-Roman paganism, uh, back on the path towards being reborn. All right, and then in Ankyra, we're going to go ahead and build a waterworks. We don't have the money really to build another one anywhere else, but we will go ahead and build wheat farms in Sinope. Actually, wait. No, we won't. We need to use some of our money to build up these units here. Okay. All right, so this army is going to be a little stronger next turn, and I believe that's all we can do in the first turn. Well, let's have a quick look around. Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. There is one more thing. Let's go ahead and issue our edicts. And then we'll have to install our heir as the governor of uh, Alexandria in the very next turn. Okay, so the, 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 the Visigoths <laughs> are they're sieging Scoopy, and they're probably going to attack Tremontium here. Yep. Okay. So, ugh, that's rough. I'm going to go ahead and fight this battle, just so that you can have an idea of what we're up against for the next several turns. This battle's not going to go well. I mean, you can see, I mean, this is Alaric the Visigoth attacking uh, Tremontium. We're going to do our best to hold these guys off, but we don't really have uh, a chance. We've got spearmen, swordsmen, and horsemen. So... I'm going to... There's an area up here where we can kind of camp out. And I'm just going to have my men turtle up and last as long as they can. But this will give you a great just picture of what all these losing battles are going to look like. Because we're not going to fight all of them. So just to let you know what the Romans are up against right now, historically. Alright. Alright. And put a barricade right there, and we'll start. Let's fast forward. Notice there are civilians walking around everywhere, which is pretty cool. Let's actually slow things back down for a second so you can look. Yeah, I know. Alright, so as you can see, these... Thanks. Uh, these look like Romans, um, but at the same time, you know, they're, there's, they're not quite as awesome and majestic as you'd expect because the Roman Empire has been in decline. So there's a little bit less uniformity to how these units look. Oh, look, there's some units coming in that way. That sucks. So they do have reinforcements. I thought they didn't, but they do. Okay, well, they're going to be able to do a lot of damage. I'm going to I'm going to keep this sped up so that this battle ends pretty quickly. All right, so they are starting to fire with their Let's archers. Take out our general. Defend him. So far they haven't killed anybody. The tower has been destroyed. All right, so this tower, no wait, that tower over here has been knocked down and this tower will be knocked down soon. Towers are not captured in Total War Attila. They are knocked down. All right, here's the first charge. All right, we don't have any special general abilities here, so it's really just a matter of waiting until these guys fall. God, a couple of guys got really badly bludgeoned here. There's blood all over the ground. Good God. Alright. Alright, so these 
um, horsemen units are actually losing. Which I expected to happen, frankly. But we can't stand up to the rest of their armies. I wish there was a way down from here other than the entrance we've got blocked off right now. Alright, so... We're going to send our horsemen in just to give these guys all we've got. They're not going to be able to get far. Yeah, they're actually getting torn up already. Because there's all these pikemen mixed in there. So they're putting up a good fight, to be sure, but they don't have much of a chance. The general's unit is wavering. Yep. Here's Alaric himself. Alaric the Visigoth. There it is. Decisive defeat. So we lost... We managed to kill as many men as we had on the field, pretty much. We killed 125 of their men. So didn't make a huge dent in Alaric's forces overall, though. Now, Alaric typically doesn't burn settlements to the ground. He'll just sack them, which is basically looting them. Ooh. All right, Scoopy is also being attacked. We'll auto-resolve this one. That would be a repeat, a, a repeat excuse me, of what we just saw. All right. Okay, the Swebians are attacking the Romans, so we're going to enter the Western Romans. We're going to enter the war on their side. All right, those are the guys we made peace with. One of the things... We would be suitably grateful if you could address an attack. Okay, we'll take an extra 800 gold. Um, take everything we can get right now. One of the things that you'll see a lot in this early series, as I mentioned, it's, it's going to be a little painful to watch. And one of the things that you'll see is we'll be crossing our fingers pretty much every single turn just to make sure. Let me point out what I'm going to be talking about here. All of our promotions went through. That's great. See, the Huns are right here. If they get distracted and head off this direction, that's fantastic. That's kind of what we want. We want the Huns to be wrapped up with fighting all these guys up in here. But if they don't get distracted, then they're going to come straight down to Constantinople. And if that happens, then we're going to have a real fight on our hands. So cross your fingers that that doesn't happen. All right, as you can see, we have a ton of money from knocking over some churches. So speaking of that, let's finish doing that. There are a few locations. Attila has this weird mechanic where uh, you have to demolish buildings twice, basically. If a, if a building is level two, you have to demolish it twice. If it's level three, you have to demolish it three times before, it, before it's actually gone. It's kind of ridiculous. All right, on Kyra, let's go ahead and build, uh, let's see. Let's build a capital in on Kyra. Oh, and we need to give some money to the Sassanids, don't we? Come, my friend, speak. We are men We're going to give them a medium gift because we have the money. We can afford it. And... Let's see what else we can build here. Some more swordsmen, definitely. And some more skirmishers, definitely. Okay. We're going to move these units into range of Constantinople, and we'll build up that army in the coming turns. This is the army that was on its way as well. So we need to renew that order. We are likely to have to cede some territory here um, just because of the overwhelming battle that we're up against. This is, this is what happens in the beginning of a, a Total War campaign is Rome. You have to give up territory before you go back and kind of take it back. 
All right, so we're going to do Waterworks in Alexandria. You can probably do Waterworks elsewhere as well. Yeah. Tarsus. Caesarea Eusebia. And let's go ahead and upgrade that city as well. Where else? Antioca? Yep. All of these buildings that I'm building are going to help with sanitation. A lot of my cities have sanitation issues right now. So just getting these to go away will help with public order a lot. And the more public order problems we can resolve right now, the better. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and queue up workshops in Ephesus so we get a little bit of extra income in a turn. That's going to be very useful for getting additional money to come in. It's building those workshops. But not being too liberal with them. That's the other key thing. Because you also need to have room for food. You need to be producing um, food. All right. Especially once climate change starts getting bad. All right, so we're going to have all of our armies down here by Constantinople, which is exact, exactly what we want. We can't really defend these areas yet until an army is strong enough to go out and face Alaric. So for now, we're going to build up these armies. And in the next episode, we will continue to prepare to go out and fight off Alaric and secure this area, hopefully, um, before, you know, the Huns arrive. Now, that's a very tall order. What I've just said, you know, a, a lot of the experienced Attila players are probably chuckling right now because it's a very tough thing to do, especially if Attila comes straight down. Let's see if we can spot where he is. Yeah, he's still up there. Of course, Attila isn't alive yet. Right now, their leader's name is uh, Uldin, but... Um, Still, you don't want the Huns messing with you early on. So we're just going to cross our fingers that they get distracted and do something else. So I will go ahead and cut this episode here. If you enjoyed the episode, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. I upload new episodes in Eternal Empire every day at noon, Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus four. For those of you not in the States, comments are always welcome. This is a brand new series, so let me know what you think, for better or worse. And I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next episode.